Let's turn now to the new president of the NAACP, Cornell Brooks. Mr. Brooks, first of all, thanks for coming Good into morning. the studio. I, I hosted this show roughly 24 hours ago, and the news of that day was the police would release the name of the man, the, the police officer involved in this shooting. They chose not to do so. Was that a mistake? The police are trying to balance uh, the safety of this police officer with the need of the community for accountability. Here I would simply emphasize that we have a family that's grieving, a community that's grieving, and a community and a family that are, that are demanding accountability. That police officer's name is going to come out at some point. Sooner rather than later would be better. Uh, the Congressional Black Caucus uh, on Tuesday uh, called on the Department of Justice to get involved in this. And the FBI is, is involved uh, already. Uh, how much of a federal role do you see in this case, and how much of one should there be? Well, when the NAACP previously, prior to Michael Brown's death, called upon the Justice Department to look at the County Police Department to, to put it under investigation. The fact of the matter is... This is, is prior to Michael Brown's death? Prior, prior. There's a history of poor community police relations. There is a history of racial tension uh, in this community. And so the role of the federal authorities here is appropriate. Uh, it's based upon long-standing concerns that are made more urgent, more insistent as a consequence of Michael Brown's death. Let's talk about your organization. What can and what are you doing and what do you hope to do on the ground in Ferguson, Missouri? Well, let's be clear. The Michael Brown died in a community, uh, Ferguson, in a county where the NAACP has been there for a half century. And near, nearby St. Louis, that branch has been there for 100 years. So we're on the ground. We're deeply embedded in that community. We're doing three things. Number one, we called for a federal investigation quite some time ago. And we're happy to see that the president and the attorney general have responded. Number two, we have worked with the community to bring forward witnesses who can speak to what happened and whose testimony, uh, as I understand it, uh, stands in stark contrast to what the police are saying happened in terms of Michael Death losing his, his life at the hands of this police officer. Uh, number three, we are the ones in the community, uh, among others, who are calling for peace, who are calling for justice in a nonviolent way. And so we're on the ground doing the work. I want to talk about, <clears throat> let's go from 10 feet to 10,000 feet, which is, you were on this show, I believe, last week talking about the New York choking incident. You have talked about, in your tenure, wanting to, the, the generational change, NAACP. Given the series of high-profile incidents, and we were talking before, you've been on the job for five weeks. Yes. Given the series of high-profile incidents that, that have happened, what is your message to younger people about both the, the Michael Brown uh, incident as well as sort of the broader state of race relations in this country? My message to young people in this country is we're not asking you to join this movement. We're asking you to lead this movement. When we uh, note the death of Trayvon Martin, when we note the death of Eric Garner in New York, what we see again and again across this country, uh, particularly when it comes to law enforcement, is uh, young, particularly young people who are suspected of minor, underwhelmingly minor offenses facing overwhelmingly major and often lethal use of force. We need a change in police culture, a change in police policing in this country so that we move to it toward a model of community policing where the police both protect and respect the community. Young people can play a vital role. Why? Because they're the ones frequently who find themselves on the backside of the back end of a badge or a gun uh, and who find their lives in jeopardy. And so we're asking young people to step forward nonviolently to make clear that they're calling upon those who've sworn, who've sworn to protect them, to protect them and respect them. We're calling on them to do that. Uh, Cornell Brooks, newly minted president of the NAACP, thanks for your time and thanks for coming in. Thank you. Yes, sir.